Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. As we all, especially the followers of Islam, know, the Quran is the unchanged, perfect, eternal and infallible word of Allah. Allah is almighty, all-knowing and free of any flaw. That is the Islamic belief. If you were a Muslim, or if you are a Muslim, what would you do if you found out that the Quran has very obvious mistakes that don't even need very much inspection to call them mistakes? Would you look for new and incomplete explanations to defend your belief, or would you have the courage to doubt? The Quran contains a verse that I cited very often before, and that I will cite very often in the future. I think it's one of the most important Quran verses. Chapter 9, verse 30. It reads, The Jews say Ezra is the son of Allah, and the Christians say the Messiah is the son of Allah. That is their statements from their mouths. They imitated the saying of those who disbelieved. May Allah destroy them. How are they deluded? If you have any knowledge on the Bible, Judaism or Christianity, you might spot the problem in this verse right away. I will try to simplify it briefly for all others. This verse mentions beliefs allegedly held by Jews and Christians, such as believing that Ezra or Jesus were the sons of Allah or God. Then it likens them to disbelievers without specifying what disbelievers. Then, in a weird way, even though it's supposed to be the word of Allah itself, it says, may Allah curse them, and calls them deluded. Other prominent translations deliver the same thing. Only the cursing and deluded part differ slightly, but the message remains. Christians and Jews are deluded. Sincerely, almighty dude of religion of tolerance. According to Islamic belief, Allah is the same God of the Jews and the Christians, the God of the Bible. And therefore, whenever the Quran says Allah, it means the God of the Bible too. The Quran is pretty much correct about what Christians believe, that the Messiah, Jesus, is the Son of God. Well, at least it got that one right. <laughs> what it is not correct about at all is the first part of the verse, that Jews say Ezra is the Son of Allah. This verse confuses everyone, even Muslims. So much that you can see Muslims online asking what this Quran verse is and what we are supposed to do with the weird information given in this Quran verse. The confusion is very well justified. Jews believe in the one God of the Bible. Jews also believe in the sanctity of rabbis and prophets. Jews do not believe that there is an actual son of God. According to biblical beliefs, Ezra is only a priest, an important one, since he played a big role in, in restoring the law and initiating a lot of old and current Jewish practices. In some Jewish traditions, he was held higher than in others and seen equal to Moses. But no credible proof at all shows us any Jewish sect that ever idolized Ezra or thought that he was of any supernatural nature. So the Quran verse says Jews, not many Jews or some Jews. It says Jews. Apparently Muhammad wanted to make a Quran verse that blasts both Christians and Jews because the former verse declares war on Christians and Jews, but he didn't really uh, figure out what Jews actually believe in, so he just made something up. No one would notice, right? This can be seen as a clear mistake and ignorance on Allah's part, since the Quran is supposed to be the perfect and direct word of God, of Allah. Sorry. But Muslim scholars can't accept it, of course, because the Islamic belief is built upon the notion that it is perfect, it is the final religion, it is directly from Allah, and so on. And how could all-knowing Allah make such a mistake? The defense they make is that there were some Jews in Arabia who apparently worshipped Ezra. But why would the Quran first then talk about Jews collectively? Would it be accurate to generalize all Muslims because one tiny sect somewhere in Madagascar believes that the moon was split in two? Oh wait, most Muslims believe that. <laughs> They make even more ridiculous claims. One that I have seen online on a fundamentalist Islamic page is that when this Quran verse was revealed, there was no major reaction among the Jews in Arabia who must have heard of this verse, and therefore the Quran was apparently right. So we know that the statement in this Quran verse is objectively wrong. But because Jews didn't collectively oppose to this statement, the statement becomes right? That's like me saying Allah doesn't exist. If no Muslim comes to me and objects to my statement, it means that uh, it's universally correct that Allah does not exist. That's how Allah's and Muhammad's logic work apparently, according to those Islamic scholars. 
A third claim, made by respected early scholar al Mawardi, was just like the second one, but also shamelessly claimed that because Jews didn't object to this verse collectively, it was right and it was attributed to all Jews, and all Jews shared the sin of the statement. Wow. <laughs> In this case, if I say that Muslims are terrorists, and no Muslim finds me and makes an objection to that, that means that all Muslims are terrorists? And they need to be judged accordingly? This is not an exaggerated comparison. If you think about the revelation of the Quran, it was not a book that was written and sent to all people over the world. It was just spoken by a loony merchant in Arabia, and turned into a book only after Muhammad's death. I'm sure if 50 Jews came and objected to Muhammad saying such a wrong thing, we would have never learned of that, because all sources about the beginnings of Islam are Islamic sources. Another explanation that non-Muslims think of, which sounds reasonable to me too, is that Muhammad just had a huge misunderstanding here. In Jewish tradition, the title Son of God or Child of God was used as a title of honor and piety. If someone was very pious, respected, and good, they would be called Son of God by the regular Jews. That was just a Jewish way of speaking. It didn't mean literally that this person is uh, the offspring of God. Similarly, Jews and many Christians call themselves children of God. That doesn't mean they are all God's semen walking around on earth. It just means they belong to God. Muhammad apparently heard that and didn't even know what Jews mean when they say such things. He just made up his opinion, a wrong opinion, and sold it as Allah's divine message. A horribly embarrassing and wrong one. As said, we have no credible evidence at all to prove that, ever, that any Jewish tribe ever held such a belief that Ezra was the son of God. Muslims try to explain nowadays that some did, but there is no source to that, there is no evidence. And why would we trust Islamic scholars? Islamic scholars try everything to defend Islam. Truth is not their objective, Islam is. There is no proof, but even if some Jews had had such a belief, one must be completely hypocritical to claim that this Quran verse is totally correct because some Jews somewhere in Arabia, like a 0.0000001% of Jews had such a belief at some point. Also, claiming that Jews believed in such a thing, that Ezra was the son of God, is like claiming that some, some Muslims believed that Muhammad was the um, adopted, disliked, disabled son of God, of Allah. Lastly, if we were to examine if the Quran verse is just using a confusing language, we could make all of this much easier. We can find the same allegation in an authentic hadith about the Day of Judgment. Some companion of Muhammad asks him about the Day of Judgment. Then Muhammad goes on and explains what happens to Christians and Jews first. According to Muhammad, Allah will ask all Christians what they worshipped, and they will answer with Jesus and will be punished for that. As for the Jews, quote, Then the Jews would be summoned, and it would be said to them, What did you worship? They will say, We worshipped Uzair, Ezra, son of Allah. It would be said to them, you tell a lie. No, Allah, they are not lying. You're just Muhammad's alter ego, and Muhammad just made all of this up. Dear Muslims, do you really want to follow this religion that claims to be flawless and wise in its message, and then make such a huge mistake that can't be explained in any reasonable way? What are you going to do with this information? Do you want to find an explanation that you would never accept if it wasn't defending Islam? When is it time to leave this religion behind? Just be honest to yourself, have some courage and think for yourself. Then it won't take much time, believe me. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, to subscribe and to share. My videos are not monetized, so you can watch everything without ads. If you want to support me and my cause, you can support me on Patreon. The link is below in the description. I appreciate all your support very, very much. Thanks again for watching. Have a great weekend and stay away from Islam.